Hello everybody, my name's Becca and this is my mum, Michelle. And today I'm going to be interviewing her all about her condition. Let's go. Okay, so let's start off with an introduction. So we already know you call Michelle. How old are you? Where are you from? What do you do as a job? Hi, so as I've just said, I'm Michelle. I am 48 years old and I'm a known carer. I go to people's houses in Sheffield and I deliver care to the person, elderly mainly. Um, as I said, I'm Rebecca, I'm 21, um, and I volunteer for Bonzo Local TV, and also I am a YouTuber, um, I don't know if I'm able to leave my links down below, I'll have to ask, but if I can, I'll leave them down below, please make sure you subscribe, just, you know, because I would really like 500 subscribers. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm just going to be interviewing uh, my mum about her condition, giving you a little bit more information about it, giving some tips and like trying to spread awareness and help you guys out just in case um, you have what my mum has or if you're similar because um, you'll, you'll find out. Okay. Question one, what is your condition? My condition. Question one, Michelle. What is your condition? I have got a condition called dilated cardiomyopathy. On screen. DCM, left ventricle disease. Art condition. With um, your left ventricle, thirty-two percent. My EF is actually fraction. Yes, was checked all in two thousand and fifteen at thirty-two percent. Your art and works at 60%, so basically mine is off. My art is enlarged, therefore my muscle doesn't work on the correct way. So basically it's not pushing the blood out properly, so it pulls at the bottom of my art. It's not pushing the blood through my body. That's the reason why I've got an enlarged art. Question two, when were you first diagnosed? I was diagnosed in March 2015. The three months prior, previous, no, beforehand. Prior? Prior. Can we edit that? <laughs> uh, three months prior to the diagnosis, I had been speaking to my doctor continuously um, with the first diagnosis was a chest infection. The second diagnosis was a chest infection wasn't getting right. So asthma. So the third diagnosis was asthma, though I've got nothing, no asthma ever. I've never had asthma. After lots of x-rays, blood tests, I'm getting absolutely worse and worse. Uh, by luck, I would say, I'd already been took into hospital in the previous year, 14, 2014, with um, chest pains and breathing problems, and I had an x-ray, and by chance, they checked both x-rays, where they found out that my heart had enlarged, and that made me go into hospital for two weeks. Question for you, what was your symptoms? So basically, my symptoms was the main main problem was breathing problems due to the fact that my body was keeping the fluid in keeping the fluid into my heart and around my lungs because it couldn't take it out couldn't produce it because of my heart condition because the muscle was not pushing the blood and pushing the water out of me so my body congested called congested heart failure. Also the symptoms was a uh, swelling of my ankles which is known medically as oedema. Um, that was main, another main problem. Following up constantly? Continuously being sick. It, I was just barely eating. I lost lots of weight. Good idea. Lots of weight. Um, feeling faint, dizzy. Sleeping. Continuously lot. sleeping. I sleep a lot, but I continuously sleeping. Um, and basically, I just do I, 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 
I got worse and worse and worse until the point of uh, the, the doctor decided that they don't, the only other choice was to take me into hospital, which I refused um. on the morning. And then by tea time, I, I was just barely breathing. I couldn't breathe properly. I was it was so congested that they could call me to call an ambulance, and I was taken to hospital for two weeks. For two weeks. That's it. Got it. Really. So you mentioned that you were in hospital for two weeks. What did the doctors and the nurses do within that two weeks? Did you do any tests? Well, at the, the first time I was in, I was in. Um, what they call an holding ward where you just put in and oh, everybody else just got different conditions and, and we've all got different conditions I was not put through to cardiology straight away because I wasn't sure they just knew it was an enlarged heart so all they could do was keep me comfortable I was put in Monday night so that meant they kept me comfortable until Tuesday morning um, where they could get doctors involved Blood tests and more blood tests and more blood tests. Scan, uh, um, uh, x ray, no, sorry, x ray. Found out that I was, uh, I got too much fluid on my body. So the main thing that they needed to do before they put me onto cardiology was to get rid of the fluid. And the only way you can get rid of fluid is take a specialised tablet, and they call water tablets. I have got a portion in for that and I can't come up with it. I'll put it on screen. Because we do. Direct it, I think. I'll put it on screen. And the tablet's called Fusamide. There's other water tablets available. To purchase. <laughs> and I'll leave a link down below for the eBay. No. And um, they just got rid of all the fluid. I used the commode quite often. So once we got rid of that, and it was, I would say, it had got rid of the edema, and it, my breathing was slightly easier, where I could cope. They had me on monitors, and I was uh, firstly on a monitor where I couldn't go anywhere, couldn't walk nowhere, I'd stop at my bed. Then they, when I, they put me to cardiology, they took me in on Thursday to cardiology, where I was best kept, because it's up problem. They then changed the monitor to a little monitor where I could wander around the ward. I was only allowed on the ward, wasn't allowed out of the ward because the liquor box what I got connected to me. It was um sort of like it was sort of like um pegged onto my but onto an outfit I got on a skirt, me night it, any in my knickers mainly pegged on. And uh, that was putting in, that I also had the stickers and wires. And that was just giving information permanently. So they didn't have to pester me. They were doing blood pressure, they were doing heart rate. They were doing what I was doing, wanted to know where I was, what, what, what was wrong with me. And it, then it was going to give information, they had to look at bots, give the information to the doctors. So I was on a permanent 24 hour monitor, longer than 24 hours. So that was a permanent one, that was why I went in hospital, that I kept on that while I went in hospital. ECGs, which is just, um, again, the stickers and... An actual uh, I would, and the ECG, that was to find out my sinus rhythm, which at that time was not in rhythm. Then, um, more mobile tests and then tablets. Now, unfortunately, art tablets are taken at a very slow rate because it's not and you can't just be putting on top top tablet it has to be slowly introduced so while we in cardiology department and on their ward where I was well looked after they just gave me tab different tablets for my heart until my body could cope with that tablet and then as they could see my heart rate going back down to what they class as a normal rate and my blood pressure classed as normal rate for me personally then they could put the tablets higher to keep me better and the tablets at the moment do not make me 
recover, they not to mend, repair me, they had to stabilise me. So the tablets are permanently for life. And I'm, I'm just stabilised at the moment. Well, what was the cause of your condition? Well, well, they actually did not know this at the time, and jokingly, uh, which is a joke for me because I do not, well, I don't say I don't drink, I don't drink excessively. Then that's I, I socialise to drink. I've one or two in the blue moon. So the first thing were, it's alcoholic related. No, it's not because I don't drink. So I second, smoking. I was smoking. I don't smoke. So I'm a bit puzzled then. That was because they're the two main things. What? Uh, and at my age, I'm only 49. There was no given reason why I was going to this. So I've done more scans. Still no answer. They sent me out a fortnight after with. You've got heart failure, but we don't know why. I went, I was up and down to hospital about June time, so I came out in April, I went to weeks in April. June, I was sent for an MRI scan. That gave it a major scan on my heart. And they've concluded, and they're still not perfectly sure, they've concluded that I had a virus which would have been probably my chest infection, because that was bacterial infection. I had cold sneezes and, you know, December blues. And that triggered the heart failure. That's the only thing they can actually come up with a reason why I could have it. They have done blood tests for every other idea they could come up with. And everything was negative. So the only other conclusion there was it was a virus. Uh, it can happen. Viruses can attack hearts. And that's, uh, that's what happened, really. How does your condition affect you on a day-to-day -day basis? So, um, obviously, by I have to take quite a few tablets. I take, for my art, five tablets, six tablets, sorry, six tablets. So, I take five in the morning, one at, uh, five in the morning, one at dinner, and then repeated the, the tablets what I took at morning, so I'm repeated back at night. So, there's a memory of keeping me, hold of my tablets. Because my art does not pump perfectly well I would say in a colder weather I, I get blood does not go correctly to my hands and feet because it's too far down to my feet and at that stage when it's cold my heart is concentrated on keeping my major organs warm and supplied with oxygen so it will cut there for the oxygen what's needed for other body parts like my hands my feet so they go cold I get really really cold with hands and feet um, that's that sort of wintry time. In a day to day, I um, when I'm walking up an incline, stairs. I won't use word ill, but that type of incline. When I get to the top, I can't breathe properly. I'm very that like, breathless. Um, there is a chance, and it has happened quite a few times. In my life, and since then, that it, my heart is in danger of what they call blipping, where they, it just clicks into out of sinus rhythm and causes trouble. I've had palpitations. I have been hospitalised yet again after the first time because of palp palpitations. So I'm on another tablet. So I've got to be aware permanently of this condition it also makes me um me, because oxygen's not going in correct places it's just going to main parts partly my brain's not in the main part so i've got memory like a sieve so it's very very difficult to maintain the condition so when you experience the symptoms um what What's the doctor's advice for you to do? Like, do you wait like a while or do you go straight to hospital because you know you're scared? So, basically, um, I'm given the palpitations then are given 24 hours. So, because my body can, has learnt by all my medication that it can cope that long, we aren't having to panic. Normally, 
they will re-go back. So palpitation means your heart rate is high or has gone up. Mine is six day because of my medication. Goes toward, well, we're not probably about 1780s. When it gets to 90, to 99, to 100, that's when I'm thinking, right, let's keep an eye on the situation. Luckily, at the moment, because of the tablets I take, they will stop this happening and it goes back down to normal. So I'll get it 24 hours. If I'm no better the day after, then I'm looking for other symptoms such as dizzy spells, breathlessness, pain in my chest, sleep pain. If all those are coming up as well, there and my heart rate is still high and it's just not responded to treatment, then I do ring 111. They most likely will put me into hospital anyhow and I'll get checked by A and E. The last time I had this episode I will class it as was last year when um again um there were no conclusion to that it just did it for fun I had ECGs X-rays blood tests more ECGs more more blood tests more poking and prodding um I was in hospital around I'd say six eight hours six to eight hours, not 68, six to eight hours in a what we call another holding ward where they just put you for um, blood pressures and uh, blood tests and it's the results basically. They just put me in there. Um, there's no, they were not given reason for this and sent me home and said just keep an eye on it. Luckily, it blipped back into sinus and it stopped there. Uh, I have to have checkups, blood tests and have what they class as an MOT uh, every year so that's how they can look after it um, So has any of your symptoms changed over time? Like, Do you have like no symptoms that you had from the beginning and are they better than what there was before? They're more controlled, yes um, when I do get palpitations, I don't get high enough for me to be concerned. It's a rarity. It has happened, and I have to admit that I'm always going to be on the danger list forevermore. Um, at the moment, it has settled back into sinus, so I'm not getting severe symptoms. The breathing, it's, it goes back quite quickly to normal. And the palpitations, if I don't get them, go back fairly quickly in the 24 hour period which I'm allowed. Do you have any advice for any of the people that may be experiencing any of these symptoms? Well, there's not much we can be doing actually. Take your tablet, see the doctor, keep informed with the doctor. Also, I'm going to say Facebook. Now, not many people are Facebook fans, but on Facebook, there's a play page called Pumping Marvellous and as the Pumping Marvellous says it's marvellous. Anybody can join what's got art problems, it's not failure, it's DCM, it's a, all sorts of art conditions, art attacks, art anything. And we write on and we have a little moan and a chat but they're there for us if we're not feeling that good. And they also give us advice and say well I've had that or oh, I'd get to doctors I'd ring or I'd be putting that as a &E problem because it's serious. So they're there for us. I've had an um, art nurse after me uh, condition. Really need an art fairly a nurse. You need your nurse. They're there for daft questions, worries, daft worries, things that are in your mind what you think, well that's basically silly but you've, you've, you're you worrying about it. And they will talk to you and try to calm you down. Also there to talk your tablets out, any uh, new results, what's got to come in, anything like that. They look at that. Knowledge is the big word. The doctor always said to me, knowledge. As long as you've got knowledge, you can control your own condition. And that's why I've got knowledge of my personal condition. Not knowledge of anybody else's DCM, dilated cardiomyopathy. My own dilated cardiomyopathy condition. So that's what I do. Knowledge is the key. 
so thank you so much for watching thank you for being interviewed um i hope it helped you guys in somewhere if you do have any other questions um that you want to be asked um ask my mum about then feel free to leave them in the comments and she'll uh type the answers to them um and we'll see you guys probably very soon with another video where she's going to be interviewing me about my conditions so i'll see you later thanks Bye. for watching